Yesterday, the U.S. Senate confirmed Randy Quarles as the vice chair for supervision at the Federal Reserve, but it is unfortunate that his nomination was continually delayed. There are still three more nominees to the Fed who have yet to receive a vote. It is inexcusable that Senate Democrats have delayed confirming the president's nominees. An even worse example of unnecessary delay is the nomination of Don Stump to be a commissioner on the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. There is no opposition to her, but yet she has been waiting for 400 days for a vote. We urge Senate Democrats to stop these unnecessary delays and confirm these qualified nominees. Lastly, on behalf of the President and the White House, we offer prayers for United States Secret Service Special Agent Noel Edward Remagen and his family, including his wife and two young children. The Secret Service announced this morning that Agent Remagen suffered a stroke while on duty in Scotland last week and has tragically passed away. He was a five-year veteran of the United States Marines and spent 19 years with the Secret Service. The President and the First Lady are deeply grateful for his lifetime of devotion to his country. And the men and women of the Secret Service make enormous sacrifices for our safety and security, and we are forever in their debt. And with that, I will take your questions. Major. Uh, earlier, Cecilia asked the President, is Russia still targeting the U.S.? He said no. Is that what the President actually believes? Did he understand the question? And is his position? that no, Russia is not doing anything to interfere or meddle in the 2018 election. You had a chance to speak with the president after uh, his comments, and the president was said thank you very much and was saying no to answering questions. Um, the president and his administration are working very hard to make sure that right, Russia is unable to meddle in our elections, as they have done in the past and as if we have stated. So he does believe it's going on. Uh, well, since there's currently not an election today, uh, not specifically, but we certainly believe um, that we are taking steps to make sure they can't do it again, unlike previous administrations. Uh, this president is actually taking uh, bold action and reform to make sure it doesn't happen again, but um, he does believe that they would target certainly U.S. elections again. Between the president and the DNI codes who said the red lights are blinking on this topic. No, as I agree? just said, that's why we're taking steps to ensure that these things don't happen again. We wouldn't actually spend as much time and effort as we are if we didn't believe that they were still looking at us. From the beginning of his administration, President Trump has actually taken action to defend our election system from meddling and interference. I want to read through a few of the things that we're doing. In May of 2017, President Trump signed an executive order to strengthen and review the cybersecurity of our nation and its critical infrastructure. The Department of Homeland Security has taken the lead in working with all 50 states, local governments, and private companies to improve election security. DHS has increased coordination among all election partners. 34 states, 52 county and local governments, and five election companies receive cybersecurity scans regularly from DHS. DHS plans to provide on-site risk and vulnerability assessments to all states that request it. So far, 18 states have requested this assessment. A new pilot program was launched to increase rapid response capabilities on Election Day, and in 2017, on-site cybersecurity support was provided. In March of 2018, Congress provided the Election Assistance Commission with $380 million in funding for election assistance grants to states. These are steps that we've taken to prevent it from happening. These are steps that we've taken because we see that there's a threat there. Sarah, Cecilia. Thank you, Sarah. I just want to clarify what you just said. Dan Coates said point blank the threat is still ongoing from Russia. Does this White House believe that currently this threat is still ongoing? Certainly. Like I just said, we believe that the threat still exists, which is why we are taking steps to prevent it. Again, you wouldn't go through that lengthy process if you weren't. See? Uh, the President yesterday clarified his comments from his press conference on Monday with uh, Leonard Putin. Does the President stand by all of his other public comments on the trip, including his comments in an interview criticizing Theresa May's handling of the, of the uh, Brexit negotiations, his uh, uh, comments that Russia uh, that, that, that Russia controlled Germany uh, over, over, that, over that pipeline, and, uh, and other comments in that press conference Monday where he continued to doubt, throw, uh, cast doubt on the intelligence community's assessment 
of Russian meddling in the 2016 election. Does he stand by all of those? Uh, again, the president saw a need to clarify the position. Um, he saw how his comments were being interpreted. He looked at the transcript and clarified those comments. And, sir, does the White House have any response to the uh, arrest and indictment of a, uh, of a Russian national uh, who, is, uh, is, who is accused of trying to infiltrate uh, American political organizations, purely on the right? Um, to try to influence American politics? Uh, certainly, um, we're looking at that. Uh, but just to clarify, I know that there was uh, massive media hysteria yesterday over uh, confusion between that individual and a White House staffer, which I think shows, frankly, uh, the outrageousness and the just desire to find the negative in everything that this president does. Just because somebody was simply redheaded, they were accused of being uh, some sort of spy for Russia. I think that this has gotten totally out of control. You guys need to take a little bit of a step back, slow down, and quit going after the Trump administration on every well, single well, thing that takes place. No you have no response to the indictment. Be ever I said we're. I said we're looking at it. Um, but this is a, a lengthy process. We're going through it. However, I do have a response to the fact that simply because somebody had the same hair color, they were accused of being a Russian spy by a large number of people, frankly, in this room. Roberta. The President today and the Secretary of State um, both spoke um, about progress being made in talks, trade talks with Mexico. And I'm wondering whether trilateral talks with Mexico and Canada and also the bilateral talks with Canada are effectively off the table for now. Is the administration choosing to go with Mexico where they see if there, there's progress and forget about the trilateral we're, approach? We're continuing uh, both of those tracks. Uh, we see a lot of progress on the conversations with Mexico, and if we could make a bilateral deal with them, we're certainly uh, very happy to do that. But again, we're continuing both conversations, both tracks. Maggie? Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Russian authorities yesterday named several Americans who they want to question who they claim were involved in. Bill Browder's quote unquote crimes in, in their terms, including a uh, former ambassador to Russia, Michael McFaul. Does President Trump support that idea? Is he open to having U.S. officials questioned by uh, Russia? The President's going to meet with his team and uh, we'll let you know when we have an announcement on that. For a second, is that a topic that came up in their conversation? Did uh, President Putin raise this with President Trump? Uh, there was some conversation about it, but there wasn't a commitment made on behalf of the United States, and the President will work with his team, and we'll let you know if there's an announcement on that front. Blake? Thank you, sir. The President earlier today said that there could be, quote, tremendous retribution for the European Union if there's not a deal struck on auto imports. In the past, he has talked about potentially putting a tariff of 20 percent. Is that what he meant today by tremendous retribution, or is it possible he goes even beyond that? Certainly that's an option on the table that the President uh, is considering, but we are in the investigation process right now, and we'll let you know when we have an announcement. So you, Yumi? you brought up the, the Fed, um, the, the Beige Book just came out, uh, which is anecdotes from across the country of what's happening with the economy. Here are some of the headlines. Uh, manufacturers are concerned about tariffs. They're dealing with higher prices because of trade. Tariffs are increasing. Metal prices and ag prices have fallen because of Chinese tariffs. It's not necessarily a, a rosy picture with the tariff situation. Your response to those headlines would be what? Yeah, the president is focused on long-term economic principles. Uh, we have one of the strongest economies that we've had in decades. He continues to look for ways to help protect American workers, and he's going to continue to do that uh, on a number of different fronts and a number of different ways. Again, this is short-term, uh, and the president hopes to open up a number of different markets and to create a more playing trade field uh, across the globe. Yumi? Hi, Sarah. Um, two questions. The first one, in Finland, President Trump um, when talking about the stances of the U.S. intelligence community and of Russia, um, he said, quote, that both parties, I have confidence in both parties. After a young woman was killed in Charlottesville, not in Charlottesville, Virginia, after protesting neo-Nazis, he said, I think there's blame on both sides. Some people see this as a president continuously making false equivalencies and equivalences. What do you say to that criticism? Uh, I would not compare the two situations. The president, uh, I think, said exactly what he thought yesterday in his remarks, and I would refer you back to those. Josh. Yeah. 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 Sorry, go ahead. And also, does the president see the interference in the 2016 election and possibly in the midterms as an attack on democracy, American democracy? U.S. The, the Secretary for Homeland Security said that it was an attack on American democracy, but the president said that the Democrats are weak, that Republicans basically had better systems. Do you see it, see it as an issue of American democracy or just his opponents being attacked? Uh, again, the president 
thinks that we have to focus on securing our election integrity in our election systems, which is why he has spent so much time with his administration making sure that this doesn't happen again. Let's not forget that this didn't happen under President Trump's watch. This happened under the Obama administration. We're taking steps. We're making bold reforms to try to fix this and make sure it never happens again because we take it seriously and because we recognize that our election system are incredibly important and is certainly a cornerstone of our democracy. Josh. The president's been uh, two hours. The president spent two hours and ten minutes with Vladimir Putin. Uh, was there a deal made on Syria? Was there a deal made on anything? Can you give us any sense of, of what came out of that meeting? Uh, certainly, as the president said, um, a number of issues were raised, including Syrian humanitarian aid, Iran's nuclear ambition, Israeli security, North Korean denuclearization, Ukraine and the occupation of Crimea, reducing Russian and U.S. nuclear arsenals, and of course, uh, your favorite topic, uh, Russia's interference in our elections. Uh, all of these issues were talked about. This is the beginning of the dialogue with uh, Russia and our administration and theirs, and we're going to continue working through those things. Uh, but those were all of the topics and certainly uh, probably others that were covered. One follow-up on a number of issues from the annexing of Crimea to uh, you know, election meddling. The president seems to have spent more time criticizing his predecessor, Barack Obama, for letting it happen under, in his telling than uh, Vladimir Putin. Do you have any sense why the president has not been more critical of Putin for some of these events that the entire world stage has, has really gone after him about? Uh, look, I think the president, as he has said many times before, has been tougher on Russia than anybody. I think you can see that in all of the actions that he's taken, uh, whether it was uh, a plant that was closed due to aluminum and steel tariffs that were put in place by this president. The Treasury Department has issued new sanctions on numerous individuals and entities in Russia. The president has continued sanctions on Russia's malicious cyber activity in response to election hacking. We've expelled 60 Russian operatives from the United States and closed two consulates. President Trump issued four statements condemning Russia's poisoning of UK citizens on UK soil, authorized the sale of lethal aid to Ukraine, authorized military strikes against the Assad regime in Syria and has repeatedly called out Russia's actions, exporting energy to our allies in Eastern Europe. Look, the president has been extremely tough on Russia, and to say anything different is just not true. So why is he critical of other world leaders by name far more often than Vladimir Putin? Why won't he criticize Putin by name? I, I think he has. I think he has called them out for interfering our election. He's been tough on Russia repeatedly, and he's taken action against Russia on a number of fronts that I just listed off. When he was beside him on Monday, though, why wasn't he critical of Vladimir Putin's actions? Look, they had uh, a number of conversations. The president discussed some of these things directly face-to-face -face with Vladimir Putin. He addressed him again yesterday. Uh, the president also sees this as an opportunity, as he said many times, to be able to work with Russia. Uh, he recognizes the fact that 90 percent of the world's nuclear weapons are under the direction of the United States and Russia. He thinks it's a good thing to get along with the other person that controls that much of the nuclear arsenal across the globe. He wants to create a more stable world, a more peaceful world, and we can't do that if we can't get along with Russia in some capacity. And so certainly uh, we've called him out. We've been tough. We've approached this in a totally different fashion than has been previously done because what's been done in the past hasn't worked. So we're trying a new approach. But to act like he hasn't been tough on Russia, that he hasn't called them out, is simply not true. And it simply completely changes uh, everything that this administration has done in regards to that country. Josh, I'm going to keep going. Justin. Um, Sarah, a minute ago you described the negative impacts of the trade conflict with China in the short term, but that's only true if we're able to strike a better deal. And from the outside, since the tariffs went on more than uh, two weeks ago, um, it seems like those negotiations have broken down. So I'm wondering if you could tell us what the status of them are, why the Treasury Secretary isn't meeting one-on-one -on -one with China when he's in Argentina for the G20 and what it would take from the Chinese or from the U.S. to restart those talks. Look, I'm not going to negotiate with you guys. I'm going to leave that to uh, Secretary Mnuchin and Ambassador Lighthizer. No, We're continuing to have conversations with China. We're continuing uh, to look for ways that we can have a better trade deal with them. Sarah. Sarah. I want to follow up on Maggie's question. because She asked about the idea that Putin offered of essentially allowing Robert Mueller and his investigators to go to Russia to oversee or witness the interrogations of the Russian military intelligence officers if the U.S. would reciprocate and have Russian investigators come here 
to watch American citizens face questions about the crimes that they allegedly committed in Russia. The president called it an interesting idea. He said it was an incredible offer. Why would he say that? He said it was an interesting idea. He didn't commit to anything. He wants to work with his team uh, and determine if there's any validity that would be helpful to the process. But again, we've committed to nothing, um, and it was an idea that they threw out. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah uh, some Democrats on Capitol Hill now are saying that they want to drag the translator who was in the room with the president and Vladimir Putin before congressional committees to find out exactly what was said in their private meeting. Is that something that the White House would ever support? Uh, that's something that would go through the State Department. Mike? The, uh, the list of subjects you went through as far as the, the, for the one-on-one -on -one meeting, Unless I missed it, were sanctions discussed at all? Did, did the president bring it up, or, or did President Putin bring it up to, uh, to President Trump? Uh, I'm not aware. I'd have to ask to be sure. Hallie? Sorry, I just wanted to ask Sorry, just one, one quick one. Uh, yesterday, the, the president's revision, uh, it was just kind of seen widely that he was leaving himself a little bit of room when he said there could have been others, too, who meddled. Um, was, was he referring to any specific... Uh, intelligence on that, or is that his, his instinct? Uh, certainly the president uh, receives a number of briefings and has talked about this subject pretty extensively. Um, we're aware of others that have made attempts, but I can't get into any of that here at this point. Yeah, Hallie. Two questions for you, and I want to just clarify something you talked about at the beginning of the briefing. So despite the video that shows the president looking at Cecilia and answering no to this question about whether Russia is still targeting the U.S. and despite multiple people in the room understanding that the president was responding to that question and despite the president having never before said the word no, no repeatedly to usher reporters out of the room, yeah, you're saying you're saying it's a reverse. You're saying the president said, this is the first thing that the president said after the question was asked was thank you very and much he and then no. he said no, I'm not answering any more questions. So and even further, I think even Cecilia didn't realize what the answer was because she asked for clarification and he didn't answer the follow-up. Again, I, I, I right because because she wasn't no. sure. I talked to the president. He wasn't answering that question. He was saying no. He's not taking questions. And I've stated what our position is. So let me get my question, Sarah, I haven't actually asked it yet, which is the president. Now, this is the second time in three days that the president of the White House has come out and reversed what the president has said. To the actually, of what I'm interpreting Sarah. what the president said. I'm not reversing it. The opposite way. Why I was in the room president? as well, and I didn't take it the way you did. But why should? So but why should this president have any credibility to Americans in what he says if, in fact, 24 hours later, or in this case, three hours later, the White House comes out and says, just kidding? First of all, that's not what I said. Um, I was interpreting what the president's intention was and stating the administration's policy. It's not exactly what you just explained. Uh, we never said, just kidding. Okay, and I think, and I think that you... you can take the fact that the president has credibility because he saw that he had misspoken um, and he wanted to clarify that yesterday, which he did. So when he sees that he's misspoken, he comes out and he says that. And Jordan. Sorry, I'm going to keep moving. Jordan, go ahead. Well, just to follow up on my second oh, question, Sarah. Sorry, I'm going to, you've asked two, have, I'm going to move on two. to Jordan. You told Josh the president has been Once again, Hallie, I'm moving on to Jordan. Jordan, go ahead. Sorry, Hallie, go ahead if you want. Thanks, Jordan. You said to Actually, Josh, I'm going to take a question from Jordan. Critical of Vladimir Putin. I just want to know when, because I don't think any of us remember, at least I don't remember, a time when the president has publicly called up Vladimir Putin. I think by stating the fact that the president uh, said that Russia interfered with our election, that's a pretty bold call out of another world leader. Jordan, go ahead. Yes. Um, Senators Rubio and Van Hollen have introduced legislation that would impose new sanctions on Russia if the intelligence agencies find that they meddle in the 2018 midterms or in the future. Um, would the President Trump support a proposal like that? I'm not going to get into a hypothetical situation yeah, until yeah, we yeah, until we fine. see uh, you know a final piece of legislation and also a uh, determination if there's election meddling. Again, our goal is to stop that from happening, which is why we've spent such a significant amount of time in the first year and a half of our administration focusing on protecting the election integrity system. Yeah, John, with that, Sarah, is voter John, go ahead. Sarah, is voter suppression Sorry. included with Guys, that, please? If we could go on, I'm just asking that you a question because you choose not to call on me. Is voter suppression part of that election uh, process that the president is trying to look for? Look John, go ahead. Oh, you're not going to answer that? If voter I suppression call on you, is a huge issue that a question. community in America John, has ahead. asked about. You're not going to answer me. John, go ahead. That's all right. Fine. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, the immediate reaction to the president's comments that he made at that joint press conference in Helsinki. It was immediate. Every uh, cable channel, 
Fox, NBC, CNN reacted immediately to the suggestion the President made that he did not believe that Russia interfered in the U.S. presidential election. I got my inbox inundated with uh, emails from Republican members of Congress uh, with their reaction immediately. And 24 hours, it took 24 hours for the President to correct the record. Why did it take so long uh, for the President to clarify the comments that he made at that press conference? Uh, Look, the President put out an initial tweet after uh, boarding Air Force One that clarified his comments uh, on the intelligence community, wanted to make sure that was clear, and at the very first chance he had uh, in a public setting the following day, he clarified his comments. Um, and I don't think that it was that long for that to be the very first public appearance that he had following arriving back to the United States. So actually, it, it, it's a pretty long time, and it was out there for quite a bit. It wasn't bit. actually 24 hours before he responded at all. Um, again, he put out an initial tweet from Air Force One. ...comment on this to clarify his remarks to change the wood to wooden, or the wooden to wood. And I think that, you know, a lot of people would, would argue that there was ample time for the president. He tweets all the time from Air Force One. And he for, tweeted that to, night. To put out a, a statement which clarified what he meant to say during the joint news conference. And he didn't do that. Why, what, what took so long is my question. Once he reviewed the transcript, he, he wanted to publicly, he wanted to publicly address uh, the clarification in which he did. There are currently efforts within Congress to impeach Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Is that something that the White House would support for the lack of cooperation in turning over documents to Congress? The President's made clear he'd like all documents to be turned over, but we're continuing to work with uh, the, our <laughs> Department of Justice. I don't have anything further. Yeah, so Jim, Jim, go ahead. Follow up. Uh, Sorry, to follow up on that, would the White House denounce that effort then? Do they have the, the do they have confidence within the Deputy Attorney General? Uh, the President would like to see uh, the documents turned over. Um, when the President no longer has confidence in someone, his administration will let you know. Jim. Sure. On the Friday at the press conference with Prime Minister May, I asked the President as he was leaving uh, whether or not he would tell Vladimir Putin to stay out of U.S. elections. Uh, as he was leaving with Prime Minister, he said yes. Did the President tell Vladimir Putin at their summit in Helsinki to stay out of U.S. elections? Uh, certainly the President, as both he and President Putin said, uh, discussed election meddling. I think we've made very clear what our position I is on that front. You're saying that they discussed election meddling, but did the President of the United States tell the President of Russia to stay out of U.S. elections? Did the president, that occur? The President has made clear uh, to Vladimir Putin that he should stay out of U.S. And elections. I may, Sorry, I'm going to uh, keep well, moving. I, just April, quick, go ahead. Was there a record? Was there a recording Sorry, Jim, made? I'm going to take a, a couple last questions. Bye, bye. Was there a recording made of their one-on-one -on -one meeting? I'm not Does aware that of exist? one. I'm not aware of one. Okay. So, Sarah, since you keep saying that the President is very concerned about the election process, right. you talk about what he's doing. You did not, you did not mention voter suppression in that. Voter suppression has been an issue for, for decades and particularly in these last few elections. Is voter suppression now on the table? When he was talking about voter fraud, people were talking about voter suppression as well. Is voter suppression on the table as well? We want to do everything within our power to protect the integrity of our elections, and we're going to look at that on a number of fronts. The reason I address, address these specific issues is because of Russians' involvement in our elections in the past. I'm going to take one last question. Right here. Sarah, Sarah, I want to change uh, topic a minute, if I may. Uh, and go south. Sure, I think that'd be fine. Thank you. So the incoming president of Mexico has made two very bold suggestions. Number one, he's looking at giving amnesty to the drug cartels operating within there. Today they come out and say they're seriously looking at legalizing all drugs in Mexico. Now if they do that, obviously it's going to have a tremendous impact on the incoming amount of drugs in the the, into the United States. What is the president's position on that, and are they going to do anything to uh, stop that from happening in, in Mexico? C certainly, we're going to continue engaging uh, with our Mexican partners. Uh, I don't have a specific policy announcement on that front. However, I can say that we would not support the legalization of all drugs anywhere and certainly wouldn't want to do anything that would allow more drugs to come into this country. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Sarah, what's the, what's the administration doing about foreign discrimination?
Hey everybody, welcome to The Briefing Room. I'm ABC's Devin Dwyer, joined by our political director Rick Klein, White House producer Catherine Falders. What a day, what a briefing. We haven't had one in over a week, but there was a lot to dissect today after the White House uh, has tried to do full-on damage control, cleanup mode after the president's uh, disastrous press conference with Vladimir Putin. Walk back yesterday and another walk back today. Uh, here's the big moment. Earlier today, our Cecilia Vega was in the Roosevelt Room, asked the president a key question. Here's the big moment that made news this morning just a little while ago. Let's take a listen. Cecilia. Thank you, Sarah. I just want to clarify what you just said. Dan Coates said point blank the threat is still ongoing from Russia. Does this White House believe that currently this threat is still ongoing? Certainly, like I just said, we believe that the threat still exists, which is why we are taking steps to prevent it. Again, you wouldn't go through that lengthy process if you weren't. And that was Sarah Sanders trying to clean up a question Cecilia asked the president earlier in the Roosevelt Room. Rick, uh, she put to him, she said, quite simply, do you believe the Russians are targeting us now? He seemed to say no. He seemed to say no, and it's the second day in a row that we're talking about a, a, a syllable and conveying the opposite of what we were told it meant originally. The president yesterday saying he meant to say wouldn't instead of would. Today, it's a no that the White House is taking back, and the White House has real credibility issues here, guys, because you're hearing for so many Republicans, they just don't understand where he stands on this. And the, the lack of a clear position now, two days, 48 hours after that news conference, is infuriating, baffling to Republicans. I've been talking to so many in the last couple of days who just cannot figure out where the White House actually stands stands on this, why this is even an issue. They felt like Monday was an embarrassment and it's only got compounded since then, meaning it's so, t so tough for any of the White House allies to defend. But her cleanup to Cecilia is pretty remarkable. She says that the president is saying no to answering questions. Cecilia says, no, you don't believe that to be the case, that Russia is still uh, meddling in our elections and is still a threat. And he specifically answered no again, which contradicts the intelligence community, which again, when he said he accepts the um, conclusion of the intelligence community yesterday and said it could have been other people, again, a contradiction there as well. So it has been a big cleanup it's, it's, effort. It's a big mess. It's part of the Trump playbook. Muddy the water, uh, obfuscate the, the truth a little bit, get everybody swirling. Sarah Sanders, they're calling it mass media hysteria over the Russians. But, uh, but as you say, Catherine, Republicans Republicans are very alarmed about this one. This is a very different juncture uh, than some of the previ previous controversies involving Russia. Let's bring in Cecilia Vega, who is the woman at the center uh, of uh, the news today, <laughs> driving this story. Guilty. Cecilia, uh, you, you are there. Um, give us your take of what the president was actually saying to you and how significant it was just a few hours ago. Well, 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 it's certainly significant, um, but, you know, I mean, I, I think it's very easy for all of us to get into uh, the role of Trump whisperer, presidential mind reader. I, I can't do that uh, as much as I might like to, to try and interpret what he, what I think he may have said. Um, it, to me, it was very clear. He was answering my question. He looked right at me. The question was uh, I, that I asked him in the, the spray today, the pool spray here in the cabinet room. Uh, it was quiet. He heard it. I asked point blank, do you believe that Russia is still interview, inter interfering uh, and, and, and targeting the United States? Thank you for putting that tweet up so I could remember exactly what I asked. <laughs> <Perfect> <laughs> timing. It's like the magic of television. Uh, and he said no. Uh, and, that, and then he's thank you, no. And, and then the Wranglers tried to usher us out of the room. And I went back and I asked again. And I said, wait, really we tried to clarify <laughs> clarification really because that's a pretty astounding answer and he again said no thank you very much uh you heard press secretary sarah sanders today try to walk that back day two of an attempted walk back where they say now that he was saying that he no longer wanted to answer questions from reporters but yet then right after he said no to me he went on and answered another question from my colleague at the associated press so uh i, I don't think that this was about not wanting to answer questions um that's the conversation that they're having behind closed doors. Uh, Secretary, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says that that's the answer and she's sticking to it. And of course, the director of national intelligence was unambiguous just two days ago. It took the extraordinary step of putting out a statement in response to the president's own mess. Let's put that on the screen. We do have it. Uh, among other things, Dan Coats, the president's handpicked director of national intelligence, did cite an ongoing uh, uh, effort to disrupt the American democratic system that is by the Russians. Uh, and uh, Cecilia, that was what you were referring to today. Pretty clear cut. Before we let you go, you've left the briefing. We've tried to unpack this. They've given multiple answers. 
where do you think they stand right now? Do you think this White House is, in fact, believing and mobilized to confront a threat that their own director of national intelligence sees as ongoing? I, I think it's just more head scratching um, that's probably happening behind the scenes here uh, for the people having to deliver the message, perhaps for the president himself and certainly for those of us trying to cover it. And you can hear the uh, helicopters landing here behind me, so I apologize for the noise. Um, but, you know, uh, as this briefing was ending, I, I asked Sarah Sanders in there today also, I said, you know, d is this a conflict? Who's right here? The director of national intelligence says specifically this threat is still ongoing. But yet in this briefing, Sarah Sanders even seemed to, to sway a little bit on that one when she said there is no election right now. So she didn't believe uh, that, that, the, that the question of targeting was still happening. That was her first answer. Then she circled back around and said, absolutely, we, we do believe our uh, intelligence agencies and, and do believe that the threat is still ongoing. So, you know, I, I think that there is an issue in messaging here. I think they've got to get the, the line and the story and the response straight. They don't yet have it down. Uh, for now, they're very comfortable. The president is very comfortable blaming the Obama administration, uh, sort of falling over his own messaging here. But as we have heard from members of Congress, even Republicans in his own party, that is not cutting it right now. Uh, and certainly he's not going to be able to get away with it. Yeah, Cecilia Vega, thank you so much at the White House. And Rick, if, if uh, folks at home are suffering from whiplash, Republicans on the Hill certainly are too. Just an extraordinary turnabout in statements today from top Republicans in the Senate. Yeah, and the general consensus among Republicans who want to be supportive of President Trump is he got it right the second time, or at least he's headed mm -hmm. in that direction. Right. So they're finding that they're, 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 they're hinging their support on him on that statement, on that second set of statements. But the first set of statements is what really started this going. And those questions that were raised on Monday about what exactly was was conveyed between the president and President Putin. What exactly is the United States doing to confront what is an ongoing serious threat that we hear from the director of national intelligence? That's unanswered and still unclear. The Republicans I've talked to is how far they push to try to force this White House somewhere that it might not want to go. It, unclear among Republicans, but also among the administration. Sarah Sanders can come out and say that the president made clear he, uh, that Putin should stay out of elections, but the president himself hasn't said that. There's this ongoing, and it's, it's been like this for a while, whether it's John Bolton and uh, Trump contradicting him or Dan Coats. The president has one line here and, and one way of thinking about it, and the administration is kind of towing another line. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a disconnect between their rhetoric and their actions. We know Congress uh, would like them to be a little bit tougher on shoring up uh, the election security systems. Let's bring in our Ali Rogan, who's uh, been tracking this up on the Senate. Ali, you've been out talking to a number of Senate Republicans today. Uh, they're bewildered by some of the president's comments today to Cecilia. They're calling for some action. What are you hearing up there? Yeah, Devin, it's been fascinating seeing this delicate dance play out really two times in the last 24 hours just today. First, you had the president make uh, a false, dubious statement about Russian interference in Helsinki. Republicans responded to that. They got all up in arms saying they disagreed with the president. They trusted U.S. intelligence. Then as soon as he issued this explanation, which again rests on a grammatical error, they accepted that and said, OK, let's move on. Let's forget this ever happened. And then you're seeing it again just now when um, when the president made those comments in the cabinet meeting and then Sarah Sanders comes out and says, oh, no, he wasn't actually responding to that at all. Already we're hearing from some Republicans who are saying, look, he cleared it up. It's fine. What else do we have to worry about? Uh, my colleague, saying, Miriam. He's saying he could cleared it up, Allie, but we're seeing on the screen now this tweet from Lindsey Graham, of course, as you know, a big president uh, ally of President Trump. He says. There is a big, there was, maybe still is, a big discrepancy between the president's statement and Dan Coates' warning. But again. Um, and, and so he's sort of looking for some clarity. Yeah, but again, but again, Devin, that was before what Sarah Sanders said. So I'm actually very curious. There has now been another effort uh, to hinge the misinterpretation of this on a grammatical or the mishearing of something, which again, uh, I think could be characterized as dubious. Uh, I believe we talked to Lindsey Graham just a few minutes ago, uh, probably before Sarah Sanders came out and said, oh, no, he wasn't saying that at all. So, again, this is happening so quickly. Just the fact that we're referencing a tweet from an hour ago that may no longer be applicable it just demonstrates how quickly this is happening and how uh, flexible Republicans are having to be in terms of pushing back on ground truths uh, and then trying to uh, not disagree with the White House when they put out these explanations.
And we're Democrats seizing on this, too, we're headed into the midterms. This, they're starting to sort of make this a campaign issue where, where they had been sort of trying to focus on economic issues, pocketbook issues, stay away from Russia in the campaign. You're starting to see a number of top Democrats m use leverage here and talk about not trusting Republicans on national security. Absolutely. Uh, look, most of them are realistic. They'll say a lot of votes aren't going to be decided based on the handling of Russia alone. But if you make it more broad about the handling of American foreign policy, weakness abroad, uh, bending over to, to Putin in this way. All of that adds up into something. And that's where you start to see some political ramifications. And that's where you have just a tough call for Republicans. It is just so remarkable, guys. We're about 110 days away from this election. Early voting starts in about two months. Right? We're in the middle of it now. And you have the director of national intelligence saying they're trying to do it again. They're, they're going for it. All those blaring red lights are but going on. you heard from Sarah, we're not in an election but, but yet. It, it, seems like, it seems like that's a, a technicality, though, Devin, yeah. because clearly the Russian influence campaign last time, the uh, influencing an election is not the same as trying to hack the vote necessarily. That's only a piece of it. So you don't actually have to be voting to be trying to me meddle around in an American election. And it seems like they almost understand that a little bit, right? Because she mentioned all of the uh, steps they're taking to combat interference in 2018. Well, at the same time, it's not happening now. So it's a... Well, bit if of you need any, well. our, our thanks to Ali Rogan for that reporting. But if you need any evidence that the <laughs> Russians are indeed still active in this country, still trying to interfere in this country, just take a look uh, at the 29 page indictment that came down yesterday from the Justice Department. Uh, indicting a, an alleged Russian spy, a Russian operative, Maria Butina, 29-year-old uh, who worked for the NRA. It is a fascinating case uh, brought by the Justice Department amidst all of this. Let's bring in our Jack Date, our justice reporter, who has been following this story. She was, uh, the suspect was in court today. Jack, um, give us the significance of this case for people who haven't been following the details. This is, this is a, a case of Russian meddling. Uh, absolutely. So, while this briefing is going on today, she's in court in D.C. facing charges of acting as a foreign agent, conspiracy to act as a foreign agent. It's, it's not quite espionage or spying, but she, she's uh, acting on behalf of the foreign government. So um, she, uh, sorry, my mic's falling off. Um, she's literally in court today. Uh, the government thinks she's a, a flight risk, so they want to hold on to her and keep her incarcerated. And uh, so as we speak, they're making that case. The FBI had been investigating her for many, many months. Uh, they were looking at her closely. They were following her. They saw her this weekend going to a U-Haul facility to rent a truck to move. When they arrested her on Sunday in her apartment, her belongings were packed. She was ready to go. And they had to arrest her right then and there. So uh, she was somebody who was very much on the move. She'd been in a relation with somebody that they identify as a U.S. person one. And, and this person had a personal relationship with her, a long-term relationship with her. Uh, they'd been uh, working together. She'd been in touch with Russians. One of her Russian uh, uh, compatriots, somebody who she had communicated with, conveyed and compared her to the Russian spy Anna Chapman uh, in, in, in conversations with him. So it's, it's like something out of a movie. And for this to all be happening under the backdrop of what we're seeing out of the White House is just Indeed, and, and, and looking a lot like, uh, apparently looking like a White House staffer as well. She was misidentified in some pictures recently of a woman in the Oval Office, uh, which Sarah Sanders uh, tried at the press about today. But Glad uh, to point that one out. Exactly. Yeah. She took, she relished that. But uh, Jack Date, thank you so much for joining us and for your reporting on the uh, Butina case. We know much more to come there. You can follow it uh, at abcnews.com and on the ABC News app. Uh, finally, we end today on, on a bit of a somber note, guys. Um, over the weekend when the president was in Scotland, we've learned overnight that a U.S. Secret Service agent died in the line of duty the first time since 2005. Uh, Noel uh, Romagon uh, died in Scotland after suffering a stroke. Today, Catherine, the president, uh, taking the unusual step of going uh, to Andrews Air Force Base to see his remains return. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, you can see the photos right there of the president going to Andrews. He, uh, for the dignified transfer, um, the agent you mentioned, mentioned uh, passed away yesterday after um, suffering a stroke, and the president released a statement, and he said, our hearts are filled with sadness over the loss of a beloved and devoted special agent, husband, and father. So... A somber note for the Secret Service today. We know the uh, president, a big advocate for law enforcement and the Secret Service, and uh, our, our thoughts here at ABC are with uh, that agent's family. Uh, that's well, all we have today here in the briefing room. For Rick Klein, uh, Catherine Fallers, I'm Devin Dwyer. We hope you'll join us next time for the next briefing here on ABC News Live. We'll see you next time.